Elton John, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. You were listening to ABC Far North. That's the song requested by Cairns historian Dr Timothy Bottoms. And Timothy, why did you choose that song? Well, because um, the road for gold was what brought Europeans to Far North Queensland um, and the establishment of the uh, Palmer River gold fields in 1873 and then uh, in 1876 you had uh, the Hodgkinson to the south of uh, the Palmer and uh, so I felt that that was appropriate. It uh, wasn't so appropriate for the Indigenous people. They probably would have thought differently, I, I'm quite sure. Yes. Now, last week you, you talked about the early European explorations and that it was gold that, that brought the new settlers here. So, like, how did that happen? Just word spread really quickly? Yes, it did. But uh, we also had uh, uh, explorers going through. We had William Han and uh, then uh, J.V. Mulligan, uh, and they found gold, uh, spots of gold uh, in the on the Palmer River, named in honour of the uh, then Premier. And uh, they wrote reports, and Mulligan certainly did, and that was reported down south. The telegram was uh, telegraph officers were used to get the information down to Brisbane and uh, in 1873 you had the Queensland North East Coast Expedition uh, which was uh, uh, led by uh, George Elphiston Dalrymple and he was sent north to uh, uh, plot and uh, the the coastline so that the government knew what was there because they didn't know they had no idea about what what was along the coast except from uh, charts and things that were uh, mapped back in 1850. 48 and <laughs> and after gold to agriculture was established do you yeah, want to talk about that well yes um but Prior to the arrival, you had the um, the Sash, Sachs um, expedition, which was from Cleveland Bay, uh, Townsville, and uh, they walked uh, the, along the uh, foothills of uh, Cairns, and um, uh, what was fascinating was that they came across the Yadinji village, um, a most notable and beautiful site, situated at the sharp bend of a noble little river, the Mulgrave, with steep banks deeply fringed by dense scrub, the latter broken here and there by patches of taro and knolls of grass picturesquely studded with blackfellows gunyas. On the borders of the plain overlooking the river, two remarkable habitations had been erected, each of a circular shape forming a semisphere. There were completely thatched with grass, no bark being used, well built, about 60 feet in circumference and 9 feet in height, and there were two small entrances. Now, this was a substantial uh, village site that was at Gubada, which is where um, Gordon Vale was established and the uh, Mulgrave Central Mill eventually was built on there. Right. And uh, what I'm trying to establish here is that there was quite a civilization here and uh, uh, it hasn't been quite acknowledged in the past. And that's why I was uh, wanting to cover what uh, Sachs's party observed. With the uh, agriculture, basically that was kicked off by the Chinese. Uh, the Chinese came here uh, with uh, as a result of the uh, gold fields and uh, they uh, uh, arrived. They were stopped from landing when the first um, ship came in, the SS Leichhardt, uh, eight Chinese were prevented from landing by the miners. And, of course, the miners found that the Chinese competed with them. And so uh, that's why. And then that's another story. So it's all still to be continued. We're going to run these history segments every week um, on Saturdays around the 7.30 mark. So... Thank you for coming in. I know you're not going to the Elton John concert, but uh, we might play a little bit of uh, an Elton John song again later on today. Thanks, Dr. Timothy Bottoms. My pleasure.